Hey everyone, Jerry here. And in this video, we're excited to feature Wenchi, who will be talking about 12 RAG pain points and proposed solutions in Llama Index. Uh, as a lot of people know uh, who are building RAG these days, uh, building performance uh, production RAG can be quite challenging. And it can be very helpful to pinpoint the specific failure points across the RAG pipeline, as well as identify the solutions for each of these pain points. And so uh, Wenchi will be going over a very popular towards data science article that she wrote a few weeks back and also just going through it visually and showing some examples. And so without further ado, uh, take it away. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, yeah, happy to be here. Um, so today let's uh, dive into the 12 RAG pain points and the proposed solutions. It really is solving the core challenges of retrieval augmented generation. And uh, we're gonna showcase a bunch of uh, um, tools and uh, techniques and solutions that's uh, readily sitting there in Llama Index, uh, you know, the, the stack. Uh, so we want to dive into and unpack and help us to find the solutions to all those pain points. So first of all, where did this idea come from, uh, the 12 RAG pain points? Uh, it stemmed from this uh, particular paper called the seven failure points when engineering a retrieval augmented generation system. So I saw that paper, uh, Jerry actually, uh, um, uh, you know, posted on X uh, on his Twitter and I saw that and it was very interesting when I saw this particular diagram and looking at the, the seven failure points, I thought to myself, well, it's good to know these failure points, but what about the solutions? Uh, so I went to the paper and was looking for solutions. I did not find any. Uh, so obviously the paper focused on the pain points only and I really dived deep into each one of them, which is great. Um, but again, uh, you know, I, I know that the Lama Index has solutions for each one of them. So I, the thought came to me, I should compile a list and uh, share with the community. Uh, so that came about. And uh, so uh, in addition to the seven pain points, or actually the reason why I call it pain points, because uh, in the paper, they call it the failure points. Um, but uh, you know, obviously we have solutions and we don't want them to fail. So I call it uh, pain points um, because we have the proposed solutions ready. Um, so in addition to the seven, I also added uh, five ad additional ones. Um, so as you can see from this diagram, uh, marked all this numbering from one to seven, this is from the original diagram, and then from eight to 12 uh, added as additional ones. I mean, this is not exhaustive at all, and I, I'm sure there are a lot others uh, people may run into, so, but at least this helps us to get a start on tackling some of the core challenges of uh, RAG system development. Um, so let's go into one by one, each, each one of them. Uh, and uh, explore and uh, figure out the solutions. So the first one is uh, missing content. So what exactly is that? So it's content missing in the knowledge base. And from the paper, it looks like, uh, you know, it's complaining about user receiving misleading information and leading to frustration and so on. So this looks a lot like, uh, in a way, you know, hallucination and the, the LM is simply just uh, spits out the information that confidently think, uh, like user thinks, oh, it's the right information, even without realizing the uh, context is not even existing the knowledge base. So uh, two proposed solutions here. One is to clean your data, uh, because if the data has, you know, contain duplicate or conflicting information, it's hard for LM to, you know, generate the perfect uh, answer for you. So it's garbage in, garbage out kind of scenario that uh, we won't know that it's important to get our data clean. So um, that's one of the prerequisites uh, in a way um, so, and also looked into some of the options, like how exactly do we clean our data? Um, I did not really find a one size fits all kind of solution. Uh, the closest I can find is this unstructured IO. They have a cleaning uh, library in their core libraries. Um, so for example, it's replace Unicode quotes and so on. So they have a, a bunch. Uh, I would highly recommend it, uh, looking into if uh, that could be helpful in your particular use case to help you clean up some of the data. Um, so that's, you know, the link is in the proposed solution, so feel free to explore. And the second uh, proposed solution is better prompting. Um, so, yeah, it's like hard to control LM to, uh, you know, give us the uh, hallucinated answers, even though there is no context in the knowledge base. So maybe perhaps adding something like, you know, tell me you don't know if you're not sure of the answer. I don't know, this may not work 100% of the time, but at least it gives us a, a chance to uh, help, uh, you know, the LM to, to listen to us. <laughs> so, so that's kind of, a, a, you know, a little suggestion. I know uh, Jerry has more in his slides on some of the solutions as well. So I welcome you guys to explore his slides as well. 
Okay, move on to the pain point number two. It's missed uh, the top ranked documents. This is a context missing in the initial retrieval pass. Um, so what this does is, um, you know, we have these hyperparameters and the chunk size, similarity top K, um, and how best to tune them to make sure that they are retrieving the best possible context for us, uh, you know, best possible nodes. So again, um, Lama Index has this hyperparameter tuning technique called the uh, Prom Tuner, um, and actually had a wrote a blog on that as well. Um, so highly recommend you guys look into that. So under the hood, what it actually does is uh, the Prom Tuner would take the hyperparameters, in this case, chunk size and top K, and having a matrix of that, you, you give a list of uh, you know, the possible combinations you wanted to experiment, and then um, the prom tuner will be able to run a batch evaluator for you, uh, uh, you know, behind the scene, and run the evaluation module, and then give you the score for each of the combination. Uh, and then you pick, obviously, the best score that fits your uh, use case. So in this particular um, uh, solution, the key here is to pick the right uh, um, evaluator. So the evaluator selection is key. The reason why is if you wanted to evaluate the retrieval end, you don't want it to you know, give a gen generator side of the evaluator. For example, you know, the retrieval end, the sem uh, semantic similarity evaluator is a, f a very fitting evaluator. So in this case, I actually experimented with correctness evaluator, which was really meant for uh, you know, the generation end of the pipeline. So that would not give me a good result. So the key here is pick the right evaluator. Then the rest of uh, uh, the prom tuner will be able to, uh, you know, tune it for you and uh, figure out what's the best combination for you. Um, so keep that in mind. And the details is in, in the uh, Lama Index sample notebook already there. And the re-ranking, that's again a very key uh, solution. So um, it has proven over and over again that the re-ranking retrieval results before sending them to um, has significantly improved rag performance. So whether you like it or not, I would highly recommend just add a re-rank as your default in your pipeline um, because it doesn't hurt, it can only help. Um, so in this case, um, we have a notebook um, talking about uh, two experiments. One is uh, retrieve top 10 most relevant nodes then filter by the cohere re-rank. And uh, uh, we retrieve 10 and re-rank getting the top two and we got a very good results. And then after that, we experiment also with uh, just uh, retrieving the top two most similar nodes uh, without a re-rank. So uh, the um, results response is proven to you know, have hallucinated. So this is a, a very good point to know that uh, you know, adding a re-rank, really just adding to the post-processor um, is uh, all you need to do in this case. You define a cohere re-rank and you add it to the uh, re-rank uh, as one of the node post processors. Um, so that is uh, definitely keep that in mind. And uh, Ravi also have a, uh, you know, a few great artic articles on this, um, picking the best embedding Reranker models and also the fine tuning the Reranker's. I uh, so highly recommend you check, that, check those links out as well. Moving on to the third uh, pain point. Uh, this one is about not in context. So this is uh, about context missing after Reranking. So uh, what can we do with that? Um, so this one is, uh, you know, this occurs when many documents are returned from the database and the consolidation process takes place to retrieve the answers. So many documents are retrieved. Um, this tells us that we need to tweak our retrieval strategy a little. So as we all know, we have uh, Lama Index has a ton of uh, advanced retrieval strategies. Uh, this page, uh, which link linked on that point, um, so, you know, some fam uh, familiar ones you must have heard over and over, the hybrid retrievers, uh, um, fusion, um, and the auto merging uh, in the sentence window, uh, comp composable objects, and so on. So highly recommend you look into them, and the best strategy really to, you know, do evaluation uh, on this based on your use case, and then you look at the evaluation score, that would tell you. Um, so go from there and pick the, the most fitting retrieval uh, strategy for your particular use case. And then another one is fine tune embedding model. So this one, again, we have a very wonderful um, uh, notebook, uh, fine tune embedding. And this is for the open source embedding for obvious reasons because open ed doesn't offer the embedding uh, fine tuning. Um, so this one, um, the uh, Lama Index uh, 
uh, stack has offered uh, quite many tools, you know, preparing the data, have this particular function available, and the fine tuning the model, you use this sentence transformer fine tune engine. Uh, so have step by step a detailed walkthrough on how exactly to fine tune an embedding model. And uh, I experimented this myself and I noticed uh, the performance uh, after the fine tuning of the embedding was about one to 6% higher than the result in uh, you know, fine tuning embedding. So highly recommend um, this particular approach. Uh, so this would address the particular um, pain point as well. So moving on to pain point number four, uh, not extracted. So this is context of not extracted. Um, again, here is like a too much noise or contradicting information in the context. When you see that, what do you, see, what do you think of clean your data, right? So that's the first thing you, sh you should do. Um, and also it's like a when the, it's especially overloaded with information. So it looks like the you know, data is really kind of poor quality. Um, besides clean your data, there are uh, two more other um, options here, prompt compression. So this is based on a, pa a paper, long LM lingua research project paper. So what it does is ultimately it compresses your uh, prompt, your context after the retrieval, because you're going to retrieve a bunch of uh, uh, you know, context based on there's so much uh, data coming back. So this is uh, the premises that a lot of, uh, you know, nodes get retrieved. So you prompt, uh, you, uh, do the prompt compression and what that achieves, it will compress the context after the, uh, the retrieval step before feeding it into the LM. And what it does uh, is it yields actually higher performance with much less cost. Um, so it just basically, you know, sort of compresses them and uh, feeds into LM and actually achieves better uh, performance and less cost. So absolutely try that uh, if uh, you're dealing with use cases like uh, this kind of type. Um, again, uh, there's a full notebook link there and uh, tells you exactly what to do. There's some, some of these, uh, you know, parameters you may want to experiment, but, uh, you know, this sample notebook is a good starting, uh, starting point to uh, try it. Again, here is uh, after um, that, uh, uh, compressor, it's uh, fed into the, the node post processor. So we notice node post processor is actually a very valuable and very, uh, you know, kind of uh, underutilized, under aware, uh, we're not aware of it, a lot of us. So we pay more attention to this node post processor. We can do so much with it. Um, so moving on, the long context reorder. So what this does is to solve sort of the lost in the middle problem that we know from uh, you know, reading the AM le uh, lectures and so on that they deal really well with uh, the beginning or the end of the context, but uh, in the middle, especially with long context window, uh, usually have some trouble struggling. So this is exactly to address that particular problem, long context reorder. So what this does is also feds into the node post processor and after the nodes are retrieved, it reorders the nodes uh, and then before it uh, gets fed into the LM. Uh, so, and that node post processor, you know, handles this particular reorder and uh, um, in turn achieving better uh, response. So, and the, the code is extremely simple as you can see, you know, you define a reorder, you put it in a node post processor, that's it. Um, okay, moving on to the fifth pain point here, wrong format. Okay, we want a particular you know, output to be in certain format and we're not getting. In this kind of scenario, what do we do? Few options here, better prompting. So this is always uh, you know, a good basic skill. We need to master um, certain kind of uh, instructions we want to give, keywords and so on, give examples, one, uh, one shot and a few shots and so on. Uh, then output passing. Output passing is uh, uh, we have in Llama index, uh, you know, different output passing modules with guardrails, with Lanchian, and we have notebooks on those as well. So uh, dive into them and see exactly how they do. In this case, we're listing a, a Lanchian um, uh, output passer here. So what we define is after we load the documents and to build the index, we define the output schema. So in this case, with the response schemas, we have this, uh, you know, education work and use this schema, then we define it in the, uh, uh, structured output parser passing here. And then that parser in turn gets passed into the Lanchian output parser. The parser here um, then it fed into when we constructed the LLM. And uh, the output, it actually, uh, in the uh, notebook you see, it, it outputs the, both the education and the work as defined in the response schema. Uh, so, it, uh, you know, that's one way of resolving this particular uh, dilemma. 
Uh, the other is pandemic, pandemic uh, programs. So again, um, Lama Index has a, a bunch of uh, this integration with uh, the text completion um, function calling and the prepackaged and so on. Uh, so, you know, highly recommend you look that out. And uh, uh, so basically it defines uh, um, the schema, uh, you know, the uh, objects first and uh, uh, fed into, and then um, through the program definition, get uh, the desired output. Open at JSON mode. So this is a simple one. Basically, you define the response format and uh, specify the type is JSON object. This is, you know, specific to JSON, uh, and you should be able to get your desired output. Um, so that's, again, uh, you know, a wonderful, good um, uh, response uh, solution to try it out. Um, moving on to the sixth pain point, incorrect specificity. So the output has incorrect level of specificity. So what this is, again, you know, it's not retrieving what we are uh, asking it to retrieve. Um, answers may be too vague or too general, failing to meet the user's needs effectively. Um, in this case, uh, you know, we turn again to the advanced retrieval strategies, um, the small to big, sentence window retrieval, recursive retrieval, and so on. So you see um, the, this set of advanced retrieval strategies are you know, really so important in assisting our, uh, the whole retrieval um, you know, in the pipeline. Uh, I did explore some of that in this uh, jumpstart RAG pipeline with advanced retrieval llama packs uh, in that particular article. So this again uh, from Jerry's tweet um, that uh, he tweeted a while ago, this seven advanced retrieval packs. So the beauty of this is like they're all in packs, uh, making it so easy, really, really basic, you know, after you download and install, it's a one liner uh, if you don't need to customize. If you do, you can, you know, also customize and uh, um, in f from the templates. Um, but that's the beauty of all these advanced packs are right at your fingertips and uh, um, use, use them and, and evaluate and make sure you're picking the best one for your particular use case. Okay, moving on to um, pain point seven, incomplete. So this is like output is incomplete. You're basically getting partial responses. Um, they're not wrong, but they're not complete. So it's like uh, not exactly what we're looking for. This happens mostly to a lot of those kind of comparison kind of uh, question, like where are the main aspects discussed in document A, B, C, right? Um, this type of scenario we have, uh, Lama Index offers uh, this query transformations uh, strategy. So this again has a, a bunch of, uh, packed with a bunch of uh, techniques, uh, routing, uh, routing query engine, uh, query rewriting, and a sub-question uh, query engine, and a React agent tool selection. Uh, so this, those are some of those that we should be well aware, like the sub-question uh, query engine, like for the, you know, um, the 10K, the SEC 10K documentation, uh, documents you compare and contrast whether from different years or different companies. Uh, so those are the typical use cases. Uh, if you have two different documents, you wanted to ask questions, compare uh, and contra contrast and compare. So th those are the kind of go-to query engine we should uh, um, look up to. And the uh, routing uh, query engine uh, as well. So that is also, you know, very similar uh, behind the scenes. Um, uh, query rewriting is, uh, I believe this is talking about the, high, um, the hypothetical document embedding. Uh, so this one is basically you give a query and uh, uh, the, uh, this hide uh, strategy will help you come up with hypothetical uh, responses, answers. And then basically embed that answer and compare with uh, the uh, uh, the embeddings to pick up uh, pick out the, the best possible answer. Uh, so very interesting to look into. And uh, you know, code snippet is also very straightforward and not that complicated. Looking like uh, just a, you know query transform query engine constructed and then uh, pass it to the uh, uh, you know use that query engine instead. So transform query engine that is it. Okay, so we've finished all the seven pain points from the paper. Now move on to the uh, uh, five additional pain points that we uh, came up with. So the eighth one is data ingestion scalability. Uh, this comes in enterprise kind of use case a lot, I would imagine, because uh, you know, for a naive RAG, we have one or two documents, do a PUC and so on, move on and understand the concept. But in an enterprise setting, uh, you can only imagine there could be you know, hundreds of thousands of even millions of uh, documents to process. So with that, like, how do we scale it up, right? So data ingestion, exactly how, how to make sure that it uh, runs smoothly. 
So um, again, Lama Index introduces this parallelizing ingestion pipeline. Um, and uh, this ingestion pipeline you are constructed um, by uh, providing all this. Uh, and then when you call it uh, pipeline.run here, you specify a, a number of workers. So this one you can specify. So this actually by specifying it, it kicks off the parallel processing. Uh, you can you know, specify to a particular number that fits your use case. Um, but uh, the uh, experimentation that uh, done by the Lama Index team basically proved that uh, it can enable up to 15 times faster documentation processing. So that's you know, pretty impressive. Um, this is at your fingertip and uh, use it um, and explore it. Uh, it is, this particular piece is uh, basically you, you can define that and then just to kick off the run and have this number of workers specified. That's pretty much it. Um, Moving on to the ninth uh, structured data Q and A. So this happens with uh, structured data, um, especially with you know we know text to SQL is good to some extent. It's not perfect at all, and uh, it's in some ways inflexible. Um, so uh, like this are the two recent paper. Um, the, the solutions are based on these two recent papers: uh, chain of table and then the mixed uh, self consistency pack. So Lama Index has converted both of them into Lama Pack, uh, allowing us to be easily, you know, triggered one line to, to use it. Um, so we can take a quick look on this particular one. Uh, chain of tables. So for example, yeah, this notebook. So what this does is uh, basically given a user query over tabular data, uh, it would plan out a sequence of tabular operations over the table to retrieve the right information. Um, so they have a set of a fixed set of uh, tabular operations, you know, includes like add column, select row, select a column, group by, sort by. Um, so by using this pack, it will be, uh, you know, intelligent enough to pick uh, whichever operations or combination of op operations um, and, you know, throw out the, 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 this particular chain. Um, notice uh, how the example here showed some of the uh, use cases that works really well with this is if you have a particular column that it contains multiple uh, elements of data. Um, so yeah, this is one, and there's one more here, like a temperature, for example, yeah. Uh, you have uh, both the, the you know, Fahrenheit and the Celsius, right? So this kind of use case, actually, this chain of table handles particularly well. Uh, in a regular kind, kind of retrieval strategy, probably you won't be able to um, achieve the you know expected results uh, as as best as this one, um, and there's also yeah some of this uh, a mixture of uh, data in a particular column, um, so keep that in mind and uh, try it next time if you run into such kind of use case. Um, and the next one is uh, mixed self consistency. So this one is based on. Uh, reason over tabular data in two main ways. One is the textual, textual reasoning, the direct prompting. Uh, so that is almost like the text to, to SQL. And then the second one is symbolic reasoning by program synthesis. Um, this is through either SQL or Python. So basically it uh, combines both of them. And uh, uh, what it does is like, uh, you know, using this concept of kind of majority voting to get uh, the best performance possible. Um, so that again is a uh, you know, novel idea and uh, in, uh, uh, came out not too long ago and highly recommend. So the beauty of that is this, all this great uh, paper came out and the Lama Index almost immediately add them as uh, packs or incorporate them into the, the framework. So for us to use, uh, it's amazing. Okay, moving on. Um, Pain point 10, uh, data extraction from complex PDFs. I know this one is uh, uh, the team's favorite because uh, the um, Lama parser came out yesterday. So it was released a big time yesterday. It was so exciting um, in, as part of the Lama cloud. And uh, really the team has done so much work uh, to make this happen. And uh, I have seen um, use cases uh, from other you know, framework and trying to uh, solve this particular challenge in no way close to what Lama Index team has achieved so far. Uh, so absolutely, rec highly recommend you diving to this. And uh, um, you know, this is a typical enterprise level kind of PDF uh, uh, passing uh, you know, requirements, uh, complex PDFs uh, with tables and uh, you know, um, images and uh, charts and so on to extract the data from those components is tricky, but uh, we have a solution here. So um, highly recommend you looking to that 
And uh, the implementation of that actually did a PUC on it um, by using this embed embedded tables and structured retrieval pack. Um, so what it does is, uh, you know, give a PDF document which contains uh, uh, tables and so on. I used this Apple 10Q, Q2 um, PDF. So first of all, we basically need to convert the PDF into HTML using this particular tool called um, right here. PDF to HTML EX. Um, so you just, just download that and then run through this particular function, convert PDF to HTML, and then just feed that HTML into the pack. So you download the pack, construct it, and then uh, feed this HTML to the pack. That's it, all you need to do is then just basically click run and ask your question. What is the total operating expenses? I know this one is from one of the tables in that PDF. Beautifully, it outputs you know, the desired, um, extracted desired uh, amount, uh, the exact amount for me. So um, just to look into that. Um, Lama Pass, I haven't experimented, so I want to be able to show here, but I'm, I'm you know, looking forward to experiment it. Um, and this, uh, moving on to the pain point number 11, fallback models. Why do we need the fallback models? So in reality, you know, if you use open air models, you must have experienced the, the frustration of <laughs> the rate um, limit issue, right? So you run it and then run into rate limit and you have to wait, wait, wait. Um, so to address that particular kind of uh, issue and as well as if for whatever, even if you host your open uh, source models, right? There's no guarantee your system will not malfunction. So in those type of scenarios, if you rely on just one primary LM alone, that's not enough. So what do you do? You resort to these uh, fallback models. And we proposed uh, two solutions here. One is neutrino router, and the other is open router. So um, neutrino router, um, it's, I experimented it actually very interesting. Um, I was able to configure uh, through their dashboard uh, a particular router, we call it a router, I called a test. I you know, assigned a, a name to it and then uh, picked a few models um, to, to, uh, for that particular router. So if you don't assign any uh, router, it will just use a default router. Right now, I think they support up to over a dozen models. So what it does, it would just smartly, intelligently uh, route your cores through the different models and pick uh, the cheapest or the most performant uh, route for you. Um, so right there, you know, it, that, that kind of service is awesome, right? It helps us to uh, uh, kind of not having to worry about, uh, oh, my primary model is going, uh, went down and I have to go to my secondary model. What if that goes uh, you know, down and having to programmatically um, configure that ourselves? Here, it will handle it all for you through this particular uh, you know, API. Um, and the Lama Index has integrated with Neutrino to offer us this Neutrino class. And we're just passing the API key and the, the router. If you don't pass the router, it will use the default. Um, it's that simple. You basically use it as if it's an LLM. Um, so just to you know, keep that in mind. Then Open Router is also another very neat um, tool. It's like a unified API to access any LLM. Finds the lowest price for any model and offers the fallbacks in case of primary uh, host going down. That is beautiful, right? The lowest price, that's um, good to see. Um, yeah, and on their documentation talked about some of the benefits as well. Um, benefits from the race to the, from the race to the bottom, um, find the lowest price and the standardized API. So really, you know, that is key. Uh, the best model will be used the most. So there's some intelligence behind that as well to make sure the best model uh, is used uh, uh, most often. Uh, this is, uh, you know, awesome. And also um, usage is very much similar to the, uh, you know, previous one. Open router is incorporated to Lama, uh, Lama index and it is called constructed by passing the API key, max token context window and the model name. Uh, then just use it as if it's a, a you know, regular LLM. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So down to my last pain point, the LLM security. I would say that's one of my favorite uh, topics, the LLM security. Why um, I deal with security quite a bit, you know, through working on uh, DevOps at my current job and uh, when I heard uh, Kapasi's, uh, you know, introduction to large language models, he talked to have a section dedicated to the LM security. And that was really the first time I heard of it and uh, opened my eyes. And I loved diving in and understand more and experiment with different options. Currently, I would uh, uh, propose two different solutions. One is Nemo guardrails. So this one is actually fairly uh, new, uh, meaning new to me. Um, 
I experimented about, uh, you know, two weeks ago and so on, did a POC and wrote a blog about it. Um, highly, highly recommended. I would, in my opinion, it really is the ultimate open source um, security tool set. Why? Because it's, first of all, it's open source. Also, it, it handles so much more than just the input output uh, moderation. It also handles the topic guidance, uh, hallucination prevention, response shaping, um, and also integration with uh, Llama Index through custom actions. So I found that to be so flexible and you can you know, customize uh, just basically a Python file and uh, you know, register, as, register a particular function as a, a custom action and you can call, you can call it a trigger it. Um, the possibility of this programmatic, uh, programmatically uh, you know, kind of guardrail is, uh, is enormous, I really feel, uh, and uh, highly, highly encourage you to look into it if you haven't already. So yeah, this is a, a couple, you know, a set of rails out of the box, input, output, dialogue rail. Dialogue is really keeping your uh, kind of a chatbot dialogue on track and not having, not letting user go off track uh, on the, uh, you know, conversation. Uh, retrieval rail, this is for the uh, really rag, uh, but in our case, we're using Llama index for the rag. So th this is, this is still kind of experimental. It's uh, limited uh, because right now they're only supporting, I believe the file type is TXT only. Um, so, so that, that one is still growing, um, but it, execution rail is like we used it to integrate with uh, Lama Index and be able to utilize all the advanced retrieval strategies and so on. So highly, highly recommend it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bunch of um, configuration files, YAML files, prompts, um, and then there's a colon language that actually, I think it's invented by the uh, NVIDIA team, colon files. Uh, that's where you define all the flows. Um, so once all those configuration files are in place, you can then, it's, calling it is extremely simple. You uh, load the config file, right now it's in a config directory, this Rails config, you load that, and then you feed that config into um, LM Rails, th this particular uh, object, and then you just use the Rails to trigger your um, conversation, generate async, and you, you give whatever you know, query you want, uh, and that will output the right response for you. So in this case, I was asking a question about the NVIDIA AI enterprise. And then in the middle, I'm asking, what team do you predict to win the Super Bowl? And then it's like, I'm sorry, but I can't predict the outcome of a developer. So it's just, you know, pretty neat. Um, so for more details, I have this link here. I'll look, look into that. Lama God is another, another one I explored um, a couple of weeks ago. Actually, uh, I know that it was released by Meta uh, back in December, December 7th to be exact. Uh, it's a 7 b Lama 2 model and uh, really uh, focuses on the classification uh, of content. Um, so it, it is an LM by default. Um, so to run it, um, we also have a Lama Guard moderator pack uh, now in uh, Lama packs. Um, usage is very simple, um, downloaded and then, uh, you know, define it, construct it by passing these unsafe categories. You define a set of unsafe categories. Uh, it comes out of the box, six different unsafe categories, but you can add additional one or you know, modify existing one. Um, and uh, with this custom taxonomy passed in, and it will be able to identify conversations coming in which match uh, your unsafe categories and it will reject, or you can customize however you want the response to be to, for both input and output. Um, so also highly recommend. The uh, drawback of this, I would say that uh, uh, Llama God requires a kind of hardware to run. And it's the base model is uh, 7B. So they don't have a quantized uh, version, even though we, I did a quantize it, but I couldn't make it to work with uh, um, the kind of output I'm, I'm desiring. So that part is uh, still uh, kind of uh, tricky. So I uh, compared the uh, uh, guard, Nemo guardrail with Llama guard. So this is uh, the out outcome, right? So Llama guard handles input moderation, output moderation, but Nemo guardrail really handles a lot more topical moderation, rag retrieved chunks moderation and calling execution tools. Um, so that's the reason I highly recommend Nemo guard. Um, but uh, there is a uh, um, Nemo guardrail, they even have a sample on combining with Llama guard. So those two uh, methods can totally be, be combined into one sim, uh, you know, uh, single solution. Uh, so highly recommend you look into that as well. Um, so that brings us to the summary. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Uh, any questions? Great, that was a oh. fantastic overview.
of this. Um, yeah, were there any additional thoughts you wanted to add in, in conclusion, just like synthesizing across these pain points or any additional observations? I would say um, probably there, were, there are more. So I think this uh, diagram could be expanded uh, depending on you know exactly what type of uh, uh, domains or what type of uh, detailed use cases. Um, yeah, so this is uh, serves as a starting point, but really the purpose of this is to showcase uh, the you know really gem packed um, tool sets in Llama Index framework. Um, so a lot of that is hidden gem and uh, we need to uncover and uh, utilize in our day-to-day -day development of RAG systems. Uh, so that's the main point. And I uh, wanted to really, you know, uh, sort of go from there and uh, build, build on top of that. Besides these pain points that you listed, um, what are some of the remaining, and because you, you mentioned solutions, so a lot of these pain points, uh, what are some of the remaining challenges that you see in, in building these applications? Do we fully map it out already? Um, or are there still additional complexities that developers might need to face? Yes, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, additional complexity, like the multi-tenancy, for example. So Ravi came up with a wonderful solution a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, adding the, I believe, the metadata, right? U utilizing metadata to handle the multi-tenancy. So that type of thing, I think it's more feature than pain points, right? Because that is an additional feature that uh, Lama Index offers. We, we could say if uh, this becomes a, a much more common use case and people want that particular feature, um, and people think, you know, they, they think that's kind of a causing pain. I don't know, it could be a pain point, but the solution is already there. So it's like a mixture of uh, so many new um, features out there that can address a particular issue in the pipeline, even though it's not a common one, or if it's uh, kind of not, a, you know, wide, widespread, like this kind of pain points yet. Um, so I wouldn't gotcha. call them pain points, but they're more like features and uh, to build a stronger RAG pipeline. Got it. Makes sense. Um, and then the last question, which is kind of a fun and silly one, is what is your what is your favorite pain point and solution? I think, um, I, as I said, I spend the most time on the security portion. <laughs> I, perhaps the security piece, uh, I think, is uh, to categorize, you know, by looking at your slides, you categorize into like the response um, pain points, right? All the first seven pain points basically all address the response quality issue. Um, so all those, obviously, they're key. That's why we have RAG. That's what, what RAG is for, to uh, retrieve accurate responses. If responses are having issues, then, you know, that fundamentally we're having issues with RAG. Um, so those are definitely uh, ultra important. Um, but these additional ones definitely also, you know, have some weights as well. Um, so <laughs> hard to pick a favorite one. I think they're all important. Great. Well, thanks so much for the fantastic overview. Uh, and for the rest of the audience, we'll be doing follow-up videos and walkthroughs where we show notebook examples more in depth, similar to what we've been doing already with going through specific use cases examples. Um, so thanks and, and leave your comments below. Yeah, great. Thank you.